This is an Ender 3. Yeah, I know what you're all thinking. What is this? Deja vu? Angus has already reviewed the Ender 3. Well, actually, it's the Ender 3 Pro, but does that actually mean anything? And is it worth the extra $60 US price hike over the original? Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. Sane Smart were kind enough to send across this Ender 3 Pro for me to test out, and I built it on a stream over on Makers Muse Live. I was really curious to see how it differed to the original Ender 3 I reviewed a few months ago, that machine there. You see, when they told me it was the Ender 3 Pro, I thought, okay, it's been a while, maybe they've come up with a machine that's improved over the original, maybe it comes more pre-assembled, like a CR10 with just a few bolts. Maybe it has automatic bed leveling. Oh, that would be awesome. Maybe an improved interface or maybe a better control board. Wi-Fi. Nope. It's literally the same assembly process as the bulk standard Ender 3 and the feature set is identical too. Same build volume, same extruder design, same mechanical movement. It's all the same. So. What on earth did they change and what makes this pro and what justifies the price difference? Well, to the untrained eye, they don't look that different, but many keen viewers in my stream pointed out a few differences that do exist. The power supply is one of the big ones. It's been changed to a branded Meanwell unit, which is slimmer and it actually has a 3D printed cover over the main side, which is nice. The SD card slot location has moved uh, up which supposedly makes it easier to access. Still a micro SD card, so incredibly fiddly and delicate. And the LCD touch wheel remains the same, as does the control board used. The frame tweaks are less obvious, but instead of having a single width extrusion for the Y axis, there's now a 40-40 piece. So it's double the width. The rollers are now twice the distance from each other, which provides more stability on the Y axis. And the print bed now has this thick removable magnetic plate but that's been rolled out onto all Ender 3s now and not just the Pro and that's something I'm going to talk about at the end of this video. Some of you may remember I tested out the easy PLZ magnetic print platform on my original Ender 3. After removing the terrible fake build tack it came with, I quite liked it. But what about the one on the Ender 3 Pro and the new Ender 3s? Honestly, it's really thick uh, with a coarse texture unlike the easy PLZ and annoyingly, it's quite oversized. Because it only keys in discrete locations, this plate on my machine actually doesn't clear the power supply when it's facing the correct direction. And no guys, I know on the stream you said I can just turn the power supply around. No, you can't. It's got this big 3D printed cover, but uh, thanks for the suggestion. You could cut it. Yes, it's just a flexible magnetic plate, but I've just stuck it on backwards and it keys in perfectly and works fine for my tests. This move to a magnetic print surface from factory, however, will frustrate those who want dead flat first layers or the ability to print more than PLA basically because it'll disappoint on both accounts as heating these magnetic plates up beyond a certain temperature around 70, 80 degrees Celsius for a long period of time uh, will actually quickly demagnetize them and they'll stop working. And this plate in particular, um, I've noticed when I peel prints off it, it, they do come off, but it tends to kink. And I've got these little uh, defects now, which aren't gonna allow me to have a flat surface ever again on this sheet, which didn't happen on the easy peels, at least in my testing. Although it is worth noting that in my test, I didn't even heat the platform for my PLA tests and the parts stuck really well. So there's that at least, you don't need to heat the platform because it sticks fine for PLA. Any other changes? Well, not that I know of. I mean, there might be some quality control changes and a few minor tweaks like with the couplers, which did work a bit better. But does that extra coin net you a better 3D printing result and experience than the regular Ender 3? No. <laughs> I compared prints with identical G-code between both units and the main point of difference for print quality was the better PTFE tube I fitted to my Ender 3, which allowed realization of a 0.2 millimeter clearance versus a 0.3 millimeter, clear millimeter clearance on the Ender 3 Pro. So I can get better tolerances on the original just because of that tube. Otherwise, prints are pretty much identical. The thing is, a nicer power supply is great, but at the end of the day, it's still gonna print like the original, 
And that's just because of the extra design Creality has made their bed with, which I've made no secret about absolutely hating. I went through a gigantic learning curve with this Bowden design on my Ender 3, and that's unusual. I've been 3D printing for a very long time, and troubleshooting is generally quite straightforward. It was not in the case of the Ender 3. And the Ender 3 Pro comes with an identical setup and Creality's typical hot end. Here's the thing. Bowden extruders need to be precisely engineered to remove as much play in the feed parts and path as possible from extruder to melt zone. Otherwise, you're gonna run into issues with accurate extrusion. You can tweak with your attraction settings till the end of time, but you can't suck molten plastic back into the nozzle. That's simply not true. You will relieve pressure, sure, but gravity will ensure a constant dribble of molten plastic until the melt zone of the hot end is clear. That's why when you preheat these machines, they just dribble and dribble until that area is now empty. <laughs> Because of this, getting 3D prints without any stringing or surface imperfections off the Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, or any of these sort of machines is a serious challenge. I struggled with profiles until I settled on a mashup between Chuck's findings over on his channel and Teaching Tech's tweaked Simplify 3D profile. Chuck pulled G-code from the Demo Creality Cat model, but I found it pretty funny that when I pulled G-code from the Demo Creality Dog model, they were completely different settings. So I'm not sure even Creality knows what a good slicer profile is for their 3D printers. Can you improve the 3D printing quality off these machines though? Yes, and the easiest way I found, as I mentioned, was with better tubing. I used Cap Tubes XS with these 1.9 millimeter internal diameter, which made a significant difference for printing quality, but basically any, any high quality PTFE tubing with a good accurate internal diameter that's close to the filament size will be a major step up. The end of the PTFE should not be cut with plies, it needs to be sliced with a knife cleanly and perfectly flat so it butts up against the nozzle uh, inside the hot end with no gap. And the outer diameter is important too so the tube is gripped correctly by both couplers and they don't slip out and the couplers need to be good as well. The Ender 3 Pro seems to have better couplers than my older Ender 3 but they still had some significant play in them and I used the old uh, zip tie around the, the catch trick to try to remove as much play as possible. It did help a little bit as well. Also, did you know that Creality has apparently patented the Mark 10 extruder design in China? Yeah, I found that pretty funny because uh, patents in China on an open source 3D printer. <laughs> lol. All joking aside though, prints can look pretty good on the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro when you tune your settings correctly. The thing I don't like is you can't really integrate Z-hop where the actual Z-axis moves up a little bit between points because that increases string dramatically. You have to disable that to remove as much string as possible. But these Christmas lattice torture tests are really challenging to print. And on the Ender 3 with a better tubing, sure it got knocked over there, probably because of the cooling fan direction wasn't cooling adequately there, but it's actually really clean. And this one is very stringy and really the only change, same G-code, is that tube. And on that note, additional cooling would be a significant improvement on this machine as well. But honestly, if I was gonna mod anything on this, it would just be to slap a direct drive extruder on. I really don't like Bowden because of the stringing issue and the compensation you have to put in slicing. And I think there's room for a direct drive. And just to hammer this home, guys, this is a retraction test with retraction disabled on the end of three. This is one with the stock PTFE tube. This is one with the best settings I've got so far. Small wisps, but overall pretty good. And this print is done on the Up Mini 2, a direct drive 3D printer in PLA on the fastest setting possible. This is the result I expect from my 3D printers. But all right, step back. Am I being too harsh? Probably. The Ender 3's price is incredibly accessible for what it offers. And even the Pro is around half the price of the Up Mini 2 which I was comparing the stringing test to for a substantially larger print volume. But like Naomi said in her recent video, the engineers at Creality cut as much as they could to get the Ender 3 to a price point. So they made design compromises and the Pro adds a few quality components back in to bring it up to spec for what they actually wanted. And that's fine, but don't be misled into thinking it's going to magically compete with higher end machines like the Prusa Mark III without significant modifications which cost time and money. I've said it before, there is no best 3D printer. Um, only the best 
for your specific requirements and budget. And if this 3D printer fulfills those for you, great, you can find a purchase link for it below. However, I do have one more bone to pick with Creality before I'm done here. I got this machine a few short weeks ago from Sainsmart and the Ender 3 has been out for right, over six months or so. Well, it turns out that these machines are already outdated, just like my Ender 3 was as soon as I received it. Because this machine does not have thermal runaway enabled from factory, which is a critical safety setting which prevents the hot end from melting down should the heat cartridge or thermistor come loose during operation. I don't know why these Chinese manufacturers disable this in the first place, but this has apparently been resolved in recent machines now shipping, and they also have a silicon sock on the hot end which helps insulate it. Creality, you need to slow the heck down and make just a few good 3D printers that don't keep changing. I had a look, and this is what currently is on offer from Creality, and it doesn't show the many variations of each. For example, there's been at least four variations of the Ender 3 alone, and as a reviewer, how can I realistically present products when they change as soon as I get them? I thought this topic had been communicated months ago with the CRX incident, but apparently not. So, conclusion. For a budget, the Ender 3 is a fantastic entry point into 3D printing if you're comfortable with making a few tweaks. I don't personally think the Ender 3 Pro is worth the price increase despite the higher quality power supply as both presented identical print quality when stock during my testing. If I was to pay $60 US more for an Ender 3, I would want automatic bed leveling and a higher quality extruder. Everything else, I don't quite frankly care about. A big thanks to Sainsmart though for sending me this machine. Um, I will be doing some tweaks on it to get it printing, printing better further. And they also sent some of their PLA, which prints really nicely. It's this blue here. It printed really nicely, but did tend to become a bit brittle if left in the Bowden, but that's pretty common with PLAs. And there is two more Ender 3 style 3D printer reviews coming. So if you're still on the fence, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss them. As always, this review has been my opinion and no money has changed hands bringing it to you. It is my aim here on Makers Muse to empower your creativity through technology. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later guys, bye.